This may seem like a weird question, but you know the Black Eyed Peas? Like, you're aware that they exist? They've sold an estimated 75 million albums, which is around the same as Bob Marley, or Nirvana, Tupac, and the list goes on. You know them, right? What I'm getting at is this. The Black Eyed Peas are one of the best selling, most popular groups ever. I'm sure you have at least three or four songs by them in your mind right now, but do me a favor. Picture each member in your head and name them. List me out all the members of the Black Eyed Peas. I'll give you a second to think about it and comment down below. I think the most common answer here is gonna be Fergie, Will I Am, and the other two guys, which is just really interesting to me. You may be thinking to yourself, Harrison, that's normal. With a lot of bands, most people will usually only know the main person. When people think of Queen, they know Freddie Mercury. When people think of the Stones, they know Mick Jagger, and so on. Which, like, sure, and I think that's a little messed up anyway, even if it's true, but that's because most people pay attention to the vocalist more than any other member of a band. But in the Black Eyed Peas, they're all vocalists, so what gives? How is this group so famous, yet people only know Fergie and Will I Am, and nobody knows Uno and Apricot? Today I'm gonna tell you about the fascinating history of the Black Eyed Peas. Their humble beginnings, their rise to fame, their... Alright, wait a second. I just wanna see how many people I got with that. These guys aren't named Uno and Apricot, they are Taboo and Apple D App, which are honestly less believable names than the ones that I made up. But anyways, today I'm gonna tell you about the weird, shocking, fascinating history of the Black Eyed Peas, their humble beginnings, their rise to fame, and how they went from making socially conscious rap and obscure new metal tracks to creating some of the biggest pop songs ever made. So the earliest form of this group dates back to 1988, believe it or not. Will I Am and Apple D App met in eighth grade, and they immediately formed a breakdancing crew, which soon turned into a rap duo. They were performing around LA, they got noticed and signed by Easy es label Ruthless Records, and they called themselves At Band Clan which stood for A Tribe Beyond a Nation. Will I Am was known as Will 1X, Apple the App was still Apple the App back then, and then also in the group there were people named Dante Santiago, Mookie Mook, and DJ Motivate, but it's hard to tell who's who or who did what because there's very little information out there about these guys. They released a single and music video called Puddles of H2O, which was on their album Grassroots, but before it got released, Eazy E died and a lot of the stuff started changing at the label and the one at band clan album never saw the light of day. You're not from my town, could you see I'm a lyrical maniac because I'm steadily on my run. The group broke up, but Will and Apple the App stayed together. They added their friend and rapper Taboo to this new group that they called Black Eyed Pods, which they soon changed to Black Eyed Peas. So this was during the late 90s in Los Angeles, where everything revolved around gangster rap like NWA. Black Eyed Peas were very different. Their whole appearance and sound revolved around being thoughtful and socially conscious. They played their music with a live band, and soon they got signed to Interscope Records. They released albums in 1998 and 2000 which both earned critical acclaim. Take a listen to their song Karma from Behind the Front. During this time period, I'd say that Black Eyed Peas had some strong A Tribe Called Quest vibes going on, a lot of emphasis on lyrics, fun, easy to follow flows, etc. And then in 2003, with the release of their album Elefunk, everything changed. The group added the word the before Black Eyed Peas, they hired a young singer-songwriter named Stacy Ferguson, better known as Fergie, and with the addition of this new member, we saw a whole new sound from the Black Eyed Peas. Now, I have not ventured too deeply into the fandom of this group, but I imagine that there's a line drawn in the sand about this moment in the group's history. Some people probably view the addition of Fergie as the day that the Black Eyed Peas died, and others would say that the group wasn't really born until Fergie got there. Without really choosing a side, I'll say this objectively. Before Fergie, the focus of Black Eyed Peas was on rapping, acting pretty mellow, and writing about themes of social justice. 
they weren't very popular, but they were critically acclaimed. Once Fergie joined the group, the focus started shifting to more poppy songs with catchy hooks, being loud, trying to cater to a wider audience, and creating hit records. Their popularity skyrocketed, but their music started getting met with more well, mixed reviews. On Elefunk, you can see just how much this group was trying to do. On one hand, you have Where's the Love, a pop-rap hybrid featuring Justin Timberlake that was a song built around the idea of world peace. Maybe it's the nostalgia talking, but I've loved this song forever. It was massive commercially, and while yeah, it's pretty cheesy, I think it's a good track. What is going wrong in this world that we live in? People keep on giving in, making wrong decisions only... And then you have some very different stuff on this album that they're probably glad that people don't talk about much anymore. For one thing, I don't know how the name of track three ever got cleared. I get that it was a different time, but still, good God. And then we have these extreme differences in sound depending on what song you're listening to. It kind of seems like a phony attempt at searching for new fans across different genres. We've got a shallow attempt at a salsa type song with Latin girls. And then we have the new metal disaster featuring Papa Roach that is anxiety. I don't fear none of my enemies. And I don't fear bullets from Uzi. On their next album, 2005's Monkey Business, it was more of the same. The peas distancing themselves from conscious rap and dipping their toes into more and more genres, seemingly trying to strike gold in whatever sound might work. The songs were a little basic, to say the least, but they were climbing up the Billboard charts. I'm sure everybody's familiar with Pump It, which even at the time seemed like they were trying to create the next big game day anthem, and they were successful in doing so. But just one thing here. I am so curious on what late 1990s, super woke, super chill Will I Am would think of his group putting out a song called My Humps with a hook like My hump, my hump, my hump, my hump, my hump, my hump, my lovely lady lumps, check it out. Again, I'm not picking sides here. My humps goes kind of hard. I'm just saying, I think that that guy would have had some choice words for 2005 Will I Am. And then this is where the title of the video really comes from. Four years after the release of Monkey Business, the Black Eyed Peas put out The End, also known as The Energy Never Dies, which contextually, I would say is one of the most fascinating albums ever made. So I've already gone over the fact that the Peas had these two pretty distinct periods. In the first period, they made music reminiscent of A Tribe Called Quest or maybe De La Soul. They didn't have many fans, they were pretty tame, but critics loved them. In the second period, they made music like, well, a bunch of other bands. They tinkered with different sounds, primarily using a sort of Spanish Latin vibe or a rap rock pop hybrid, and they made a handful of hit records. They started blowing up, but now they had mixed reviews. But when the Black Eyed Peas made the end in 2009, and I'll also throw in 2010's The Beginning into this part too, it's hard to really, truly, accurately describe what happened here. The end specifically has an absurd number of hit songs. Let me run you through the first five tracks on the album. Boom Boom Pow, Rock That Body, Meet Me Halfway, I'm a Bee, and I Got a Feeling. That is absolutely unbelievable stuff. I don't think I've ever seen an album with that many big songs back to back to back to back to back. And here's my opinion on them. I think that they're incredible pop songs, but I feel this weird existential dread for enjoying them. And I'm not saying that I'm embarrassed to like them. I had a whole video about why I think that the idea of guilty pleasure music sucks. I just feel like these songs were made in a laboratory. It's like the biggest, most important people in the music industry paid a team of robots to analyze what was popular and recreate those ideas so that we would have the biggest, most perfect, most iconic pop songs of the year, and that sounds very scary and negative in concept, but somehow they did it. The robot succeeded. You could not escape these songs even if you wanted to for all of 2009 and 2010, but I don't even know if I really minded because they were these massive, anthemic, huge pop songs 
that I couldn't help but enjoy. They felt inauthentic to the core, but if somebody threw Meet Me Halfway on right now, I'm jumping out of my seat and dancing around. And I know somebody's gonna yell at me if I don't bring it up, so remember on The Office when Robert California says, I am so tired of the Black Eyed Peas. It's rock and roll for people who don't like rock and roll. It's rap for people who don't like rap. It's pop for people who don't like pop. This is the album that defines that feeling. The songs feel lifeless and they don't really have any sense of truth or wonder, but they also feel like perfect pop songs, which is hard to explain and maybe I've done a bad job explaining my view, so sorry. But anyways, since then, the Peas have started morphing back into the old group. Fergie officially left in 2018, that same year the now trio of rappers released an album called Masters of the Sun Volume 1, which is thought of as a sequel to 2000's Bridging the Gap. And funny enough, this was the group's least popular album in years, but also their most critically acclaimed project in well over a decade. So what do you think? Are you surprised by the trajectory of the Black Eyed Peas over time? What do you think about their transformation from making conscious hip-hop to making some of the most popular songs of this century? For me, this group has one of the weirdest timelines in music history. To do a full 360 of woke and socially conscious, to trying to make huge pop songs, and then going back to woke and socially conscious, but somehow succeeding in one way or another during every point in their career, is just baffling. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and thanks for watching. Hey, thank you for watching that video. When I started this week, I didn't think that I'd be making a 20 minute long video about the Black Eyed Peas, but here we are. If you wanna support the channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media at RentshawHS. You can buy my merch, support my Patreon, and thank you again, I'll see you soon.